Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Guess who I am back here with today? Hey. Long time no see. It's been six months. Yes, it's been six months. Back to the channel. Today I'm here with a very special guest. I'm here with Benji. Very fast, right? Time passes. My hair is longer now. <laughs> even even more beautiful than last time, of course. I'm back with my favorite makeup artist, Benji, and today we are recreating the best of all beauty standards in Asia. Yes. We're gonna be using Thai influence for our brows, Korean Egyosa eyes, Japanese Igari cheeks, and the viral Korean jelly lips. Yes. So let's jump into it. American has their own way of using this, but in Korea, they love this very much for a prep for this. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think what a lot of people forget is that skincare is like one of the most important parts yeah. of doing your makeup. So after that, right, next I'll be going in especially with the skin setting uh, glowing base from Jamsumu. So a lot of people ask me, why am I using two different primers, right? Mm -hmm. The job is just to get the skin soft and okay. attached to the makeup itself. This is also to attach the skin, but it gets a little bit more on the glowy side. You know, I don't even use primer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of Asian beauty, when you watch the tutorials, you see like they spend half the video, like before they even start doing all the skincare and all the space work. And I think with American beauty, we don't do that. And oh, so really? that's a big start difference. So the color correcting I'm using for you will be this one today. Okay, just to cover a little bit of the under eyes here, darkness, not too much. And also some of the spot that I feel that uh, can lifting and brighten up the face. Yes, please. All right. I have to show Benji this because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I bought this palette. It's from Daisy. It's very affordable. But there are so many different colors and they're all supposed to conceal stuff. So I know the green is to counteract pink. Correct. What is the purple for? The purple is for downness. Or let's say your skin is a bit uh, towards the gray side. It's the right down. Uh, this one gives you a brighter effect. Okay. The okay. green one is basically just for a redness. And then the pink one is just to bring down any blue. If let's say you have any darkness or blue, let's say usually it's under eyes for oh, eyes. Like a vein or like something. Vein something. But some girls or some guys they have the, those yellowish skin. Mm. You know the yellow. Then you have to use this Ye yellowish. You cannot use green because ah. if you use green, you turn even more yellow. The first layer is actually color correction. The second layer is actually your concealer. Oh. The third layer is your contouring panel. Oh <laughs> yeah, I thought they were all the same thing. thing. I'm just gonna lightly color correct certain areas. Remember last time I was using my fingers to right. blend out my concealer? And then next I'll be going in is actually the cushion. Uh, for cushion wise, right, it really depends on your skin tone or mm. the place you're in now. Maybe let's say today you're in Singapore, it's humid weather, I will not give you something that's very wet and moisturizing. Right. I'll give you something a little bit more in the in between setting will be a good choice. Uh, but if let's say today I in Korea, I can tell you I'll definitely use the most wet product that I find. Mm. Because it's so dry that the lid cracks, the skin will also crack. Maybe let me show you my tips of doing cushion. Okay. I like to usually get to its very minimum oh. before I start applying. That way, you know what? You get very thin product at the same time. Uh, you don't uh, you don't clog the pores like overpowering the product. So. And my trusty sponge came in again. It's yes. what I like to use. The one Benji likes to use is now discontinued forever. So yes. I actually ordered it from the US and it took like six months to come because they lost the package twice. <laughs> but now they have a wedge version. I'll link it down below for those yeah. of you guys looking to get it. But the sponge consistency, like if you could touch it, you would just know why it's so superior. It's like the perfect amount of density and it doesn't feel foamy yes. at all. After color correcting everything, this will be the thing. Yay! Before I get the colors. <laughs> so next, right, we're gonna go in is actually the eyes. Same thing, I like to have primer for my eyes first before I do anything. So actually, Argue, a lot of people thought that it's only one look, right? So Argue actually has different version. There is a natural version, mm -hmm. there is a starter version, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is a downturn version and there's an upturn version. Okay, so the okay. downturn version, upturn version is slightly more obvious. It's for people that really love the kind of big eyes effect. Mm -hmm. But why is it downturn and upturn? It's basically because they want their eyes to either look puppy or they want their eyes to look a little bit more cat eyes. I Just see. like you know our eyeliner wing, right? We can do if we do straight and lower a little bit lower, it's in more Japanese style, it's a bit puppy puppy. eyes. But if you do slightly upwards or maybe more lifted, that is on cat the eye. cat eyes. Wow, primer on the bottom, that's yep. news to that's me. Next, uh, we'll be introducing is certain colors that you can use for your over eyes, Agio style. So usually for Agio style, right, I would not recommend you to use very uh, strong colors, strong colors uh, for natural look. I uh, would recommend something like that, this color, mm. this one mousse itself. For today, the base color I'll be using 
uh, Judy Dog. It's one of my favorite uh, base color for a Korean uh, to get the Akio effect. Same brush, excessive. Ice look up, just the bottom. So today the Akio I'm showing you, I told you four Akio, right? The one I'm showing you will be on the lifting one. Mm -hmm. I'll get a darker color, something like that. We'll do some highlights point over here. This one that I'm recommending is actually from John Sumo. It's a very popular color that is called the uh, Cotton Nude. And if you are very new to this particular style of makeup, a good choice will be getting the brightness done first. You get the overall base where you think your line should be, then you gauge your line. That will be an easier way to do it. For this style where I've highlighted, I'll usually use these two brushes over mm -hmm. here. One is to define and one is to overall get the base of the agio. Like how do you know where to highlight and where to shadow? Like okay. do you squeeze your eyes? Like what's yes. the best way to know? If you small and you can't really see where is it, then the best way is to get a highlight done first really before you get to the uh, darker part of it. I see. Okay, this is the brush that we're using to create the Agio line. So Agio has two main lines that you need to create. So I'm not so sure if a lot of people thought that Agio is only one line, but it's actually two lines. Mm. So the first line will be at the bottom here. The second line will be the lash line here. Uh -huh. Okay, lash line. The lash line is supposed to open up your eyes. So you're not supposed to do uh, directly on the lash line, but just slightly lower the lash line, especially to a two third before you open up the eyes itself. The color that I'm using over here to Nagio is this color, particular darker color. Okay, you can use any dark brown color, just not too reddish or gray, okay? I always like to just draw the line here first, just to make sure that uh, I do not have excessive products over here, that this is something that I need from. And when I start doing Nagio, right, so a lot of people ask me, do I start from the end, do I start from the tip, or do I start from the center, right? To say that there's always mm -hmm. one of the issue, right, okay? Since I already draw your uh, uh, highlight part, I really can see a faint agio line that where I need to place my agio in. This is the first line you're getting. After that, right, you don't need this anymore. You just need this to blend it out. That is the first line you get agio style. Second line, same thing, get back this same color product itself. We will start from the center of the eyes to the lash line where we hit the most part where it's two thirds of the eyes. We do not go up, we go straight. The reason is we don't want to uh, follow the lash line exactly to the end is because we want to create a bigger eyes effect. That's the whole reason for our deal. Right? This is your two line here. First line is here, second line is here. At the end, this is where you can use your shiny part where you have your highlight parts ready. This is a very good uh, base kind of uh, glittery shiny part. You, you can use any part that is glittery to get the shiny part up. To complete your agio, right, it's basically you need to, in a corner, you also need to have your particular uh, uh, darkness over here. Like I say, if I'm going to do a cat eyes, I'll focus more over here. Okay, so this is what we usually use to combine lashes. Oh, to clip yeah. them together. Yeah, them together. So, and then, uh, this is the best to clean again because this yeah, is Yeah, this one is the best one. For Korean lashes, it's very important. They spend a lot of time on their lashes itself. Okay, I'm not sure you can see me burning this thing. Make sure that it's not too warm, okay, <laughs> before touching your own eyes itself. Yeah. A good tip about curling lashes, if you are not familiar with, is to always look on the floor, lift up your eyes a little bit, and then when you get all your lashes in, right, press in and lift up and always comb your lashes after each curl. My own trick of how to apply mascara is uh, I always used to have a cup before I start applying on. Mm. Okay, let me just get a cup. So last time Benji did not show us how to do mascara because I had eyelash extensions, so yes. this will be the first time that we, we get to see it in the flesh. Uh, I like to get cuts that is very flimsy mm. and when I apply mascara, I do not get to any part of your eyelid. Right? So this is level one. Level two is something that all Korean makeup artists or beauty people like to use is to get something like this, a clamp. Mm. Uh, you can use a tweezer, that's fine too, but I like to use something that's more big and clampy. Very good. So this is where you get all the lashes clamp up. It's way more defined. And lastly, I like to do is to use a burning technique to get evenly coated lashes. Yay. And then lastly, I always like to just go straight and just a tip of it. Oh my god! Now you understand the difference, right? They when look like you, falsies yeah, they on look like my falsies. eyes. So what I'm going to do then is, this is the mascara that I'm going to use here. Uh, I still got 4B. 
and then we're just gonna apply first. So for glitter, right? Usually I only like to do high points because you need your agio and stuff already. I feel like a K-pop star. <laughs> I feel like I need to join a girl group. This is incredible. Next, we'll go for eyebrow itself. So eyebrow, right, is uh, it's all about the definition. Mm. Okay, but when I say definition, I don't mean dance. I don't mean thick dance dark eyebrow. Mm -hmm. When I say definition means uh, stroke by stroke. A very good example is if let's say you have seen this uh, artist or a model before. Her name is Davika. She has perfect brows to get the kind of Thai look that you want from here. Why are they given 3 hours uh, to do hair makeup? Because they say that some of them still need to dye their hair, uh, touch up, but they need to do extension also. So that's why uh, they need at least minimum 3 hours. So let's say if the show is at 6 and rehearsal uh, is 5, they have to get there at 2 to start doing everything. It's like a wedding. Yeah. It's like a wedding. And it's truly really like a wedding. It's a daily thing. Like. So when we say definition brow itself, right, uh, this is my trusty own Shimura Swap Eyebrow Pencil So basically, uh, the common colour for most Asian is 2 uh, But if let's say your hair is now brown a little bit more You can actually go for a little, a little bit more brownish mm -hmm. If you are American and you have very light browns, 9 You have beautiful brows to start with lah. So I'm very blessed Actually, so my brows it. are done by Dr. Lash Who oh. we're stealing their office to shoot this today But I actually did brow lightening with Dr. Lash as well oh, So they microbladed and then ah. lightened Because naturally my brows are very dark And because my hair is light it's, uh, It helps to be a bit lighter so People like to go upwards But I prefer to go downwards Because it gives me pr uh, precision on how I want to look like Can you tell the difference now? Okay this is the brows that actually has more defined and getting lines. This is the one that is just the one that you did over here, which is still beautiful itself, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But usually when we go say, we're gonna go for a tie makeup, we want to get a more definition to it, especially every strand. Can really tell the one strand, one strand, one strand by itself. And then next we'll go into is the... The Igari makeup. The Igari makeup, but the difference that I'm doing today is Igari makeup with freckles. So we want to avoid something that's too new, mm -hmm. okay? So what is too new? Not saying new is not a good uh, style of makeup, but uh, if you want to go for that look right, try to avoid blusher like this. Mm -hmm. Can I tell? It's way too new for her, so that it's not going to get you that particular, and you're going to layer so much of product to get you. So a good choice would be something like uh, these two to get the style. If let's say you are uh, fairer skin, you can use this particular purple pink brush, which is very trendy now as Igari makeup. Uh, if you are slightly more tan, uh, more oily skin, try not to use this because it casts a grey, greyish part to you. You can use something that's more coral to you, like your favorite color, coral. Yes. But today I'm gonna let you try this particular <gasps> part that is uh, uh, because I give her a slightly more fair skin base to start with as compared to her daily usual look. Okay. To get the effect out, and I will end off with this particular little cute little. Water tint get as closer to the under eye itself to make it feel that like you're having a little drama in the mm -hmm. And for people that wants to frame your face better, if let's say you have a long face and you want to shorten your face, ugly uh, makeup is a very good choice to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if let's say you have a very short face mm -hmm. and you want to uh, widen your facial uh, face a bit. Then I'll try to, from this position, I'll go lower and a bit mm. next to your nose area just so that your face is more proportional. But I think that uh, for this look itself, right, I like to go higher a bit because it usually does give you a, a, a more sharper V shape line. Mm. I would recommend not to put too much, uh, slowly build up to the style that you feel comfortable uh, on screen itself or in real life itself. Right? So the good thing about purple pink blush right, is it gives you a little bit more of the youthful look. It gets you a bit of a youthful look, mm. okay? But just to make sure people are selecting this color of blush, your skin tone must be slightly towards the fairer skin, yeah, and not too olive, uh, not too olive and tan. So after this is done, I like to go in for. So you press and you turn. Yeah. After that, you can either use this brush to slightly blend out a little bit more. If not, you can also use a cotton bud like from one of the G one just to lightly blend out a little bit more I think now makeup trend is always less is more Agreed, saying less is more but we've, we'll be like sitting at like 2-3 hours for this look <laughs> That's exactly what I think I'll like mm, It's an explanation of how I'm doing
Less is more is not about timing, okay? Less is more is putting lesser, but more de more time focusing on the right space only. Color over here, you get to choose from which color you want to give the water blush itself, but I'll be taking the lighter color itself, it's something like that. My God, this is a very nice water blush. Good, can I take a look? So basically for lip wise, right, there's three things to get the jelly look. So jelly look is also very Korean now, very trendy. Right, so the color I'm using actually is something like that over here that you see over here. Okay, and then before that, we will actually be using a lip liner to not define the shape, but just to give a little bit of a contouring. If you like your lip color, you can stay at least. If you feel that your lip color is a bit down, you can always use a concealer, okay, just to, not the whole lips, then it out just to touch up on the outer corner of the lips okay you don't have to draw the whole thing you just have to draw a little line over here okay a little thick line over here and also here and lastly you'll go underneath here the point where you want to get your lower lips if you really like thick lips you can go lower but i usually like to go uh, the rule of thumb is here just a little bit lower than this part okay. after i'm done with this this is where your trusty little brush will come in. So basically I have my lines here, right? I like to use this to blend out first. I place my product from here, the top part, inner corner, side, outer, inner, and the ends over here. Mm -hmm. I leave the rest empty. So after this is done already, right? This is where you come in with your brush, you blend them out. Okay? So for jelly thing, right? How will you apply this? Can I ask you? Sorry. How will I apply it? How will you apply this? That's a good question. I would do it all over, but I think the answer is to put it just in the middle. Okay, so maybe remember the part where we didn't put any oh. product. Oh, that's where we put yeah, this Yeah, that's where we put this oh. product over here to okay. get that jelly lid that you want because it's all the highlight points that are over here. I see. So same thing, you can always do it. You can apply okay. it directly, but I like to do it behind my hand. So I will usually take a brush over here, okay? And I will just apply only on the areas where I didn't apply any of the product. You know oh my I mean? gosh! <laughs> wow! I think I've been doing it wrong this whole time. You know, I've been applying everything, and I just think that if you layer it enough, it'll become this jelly look. But you can clearly see that it's very 3D looking. I love that look on you. And then obviously, we can end off with a setting spray. Okay, here is the finished look. I'm screaming, like it looks so good. So we have the Thai brows, we have the Egosol eye look, we have the Igari makeup from Japan Influence with some American freckles. Yes. And then finally we have the jelly lips that are very TikTok viral. So yeah, all of the products will be linked down below if you are interested in recreating this look. Please, please, please go check out Benji's Instagram page. He's so talented and I always learn so much from the pictures. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, the pictures and the content he posts are very educational. So make sure you go follow him there. See you next time. Bye. Bye.